Hello there, ATS EVS 113 students. Dr. Shragi here, and I'm starting you on the two lecture series that's about moving heat around in the atmosphere. This is a very long block of material here in this first module, and that's why we had to break it up into two lectures. Um, and it covers a lot of material about, like, in general heat and radiation and so on in the Earth's atmosphere. Here we are in part one of this lecture that's going to talk about things like conduction, convection, advection, and, the, and radiation, including what radiation is and the kind of laws that govern how much radiation moves through the atmosphere and so on. We'll talk about what happens when radiation hits objects, and by objects I mean, mean things like anything, I mean clouds, the atmosphere, or in our day-to-day -day life, as we'll see when we get to that part of the lecture, and we'll also talk about the radiation budget in the Earth's atmosphere, which helps determine things like the temperature of the Earth's surface, and also the role of clouds in um, maintaining the temperature of the Earth's surface, and so on. So just here in part one of this very long lecture, we uh, actually cover a lot of material about he the role of heat in the Earth's atmosphere. He, the study of moving heat is actually extremely important in physics and engineering and so on. It's called thermodynamics. We're not obviously going to get into any of the details of uh, like the equations and so on as to how heat moves around. But when you're talking about moving heat around in the atmosphere, it turns out there's three main ways that, can, that he, radi uh, heat can be moved. Uh, heat can be moved by conduction by convection and advection, or by radiation. And we're going to be examining each of those processes in some measure of detail. Um, conduction is, in many ways, the easiest way to picture how heat moves. Uh, as I have here as a little dictionary definition of conduction, conduction is moving heat between two objects that are different temperatures and are touching. The idea that things are touching is incredibly important to the idea of conduction. And, you know, like on the little diagram here, I show some examples of heating something by conduction. The pan is hot, we put the cold egg onto the pan, and heat transfers from the pan into the eggs by conduction. Two objects are touching and they are different temperatures, so heat moves from the hotter object into the cooler object. And, you know, this is obviously an important way in which heat is moved around in the Earth's atmosphere as well, um, except for the fact that the atmosphere is actually terrible at moving heat by conduction. Um, you'll see that there is still a way in which conduction is important, but, I mean, actually we exploit the fact that air is terrible at conduction uh, and moving heat by conduction in our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, that's how, say, insulation in your attic works, to look at one of those pictures right there. Uh, it traps, insulation is fluffy, foamy stuff that has little trapped air pockets in it. So as your house in the winter is losing heat by the inside being warm and it's touching the outside of the house, you know, with, with cold, or cold air, the trouble is the heat has to move through each of those little trapped pockets of air in the insulation that it will happen very slowly. And as a consequence, relatively little of the heat will be able to conduct out from the warm house out into the cold environment around you. That's the way... You know, sweaters and hats work too. They have trapped air pockets in the fluffy parts there. And so you're warm, your air around you is cold, but it takes a long time for heat to conduct through all those little pockets of trapped air in the sweater and in the hat and so on and conduct out away from you. And so as a consequence, the your heat tends to just stay inside of you rather than conducting out into the cold air around you. That's how fur works, too, for that matter. I mean, that fluffy monkey up there is staying warm by be having fluffy fur that's full of trapped air. And so heat from inside the monkey's body doesn't conduct away from the monkey very fast. Air is actually terrible at conduction. In fact, uh, technically speaking, air is considered an insulator, meaning that it resists the flow of heat. But um, conduction can actually be important in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, conduction of heat between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere is actually relatively efficient. Um, and as a consequence, like if the ground is warm but the air is cool, the atmosphere is actually pretty good at picking up heat from the ground by conduction uh, and putting it into the atmosphere. So, you know, if you have a cold wind blowing over a warm field or something like that, the air will warm up relatively quickly by conduction. But that's really pretty much the only way in which air is good at uh, having heat transfer by conduction. If you have some cold air from the north meeting warm air from the south, uh, 
it isn't like, oh, well, the cold air from the north is, is touching the warm air from the south. I guess the cold air will warm up. No, it doesn't work that way. Air is actually pretty terrible at conduction in those kinds of senses. So from a point of view of the atmosphere, the only place you need to worry about conduction is right at the surface of the Earth. But conduction, of course, was just only one of the ways on our list of how to move heat around in the Earth's atmosphere. Number two is two processes that are way, way more efficient for moving heat around in the atmosphere, and that's convection and advection. Both conv convection and advection are about moving a fluid. Uh, in this case, we're talking about air as our fluid. Fluid, remember, we tend to think of it as meaning liquid, but it, it means just anything that flows. Uh, so air is a fluid. Um, convection is by moving heat, by moving a heated fluid vertically, and advection is moving heat by moving a heated fluid uh, horizontally. So they're both about moving a heated fluid, they're just doing it, uh, convection means vertically, and uh, advection means horizontally. So if you take air that you have heated, and you move it someplace else, that's a way of moving heat. That's how the uh, the radiators in a house or in your school or whatever work. They, they heat the water, and then they move the water to your room where the radiators are, and that is a way, a very efficient way of transporting heat from the boiler up to your room. Uh, in the case here of this uh, picture, of these hot air balloons. Okay, the burner is heating the air in the balloon, and then the balloon rises off to some place, and that is moving the heat. Okay, um, advection is moving heat horizontally, like, you know, we have a warm volume of air that is over the Gulf of Mexico, and then a south wind brings it over the Midwest. That is a way of transporting heat very efficiently by advection. Anytime you're moving uh, a fluid vertically, though, you should be thinking about convection. Now, if you Google, do a Google image search on convection, you're going to see lots of examples of, like, what I have here, where they're showing, like, you know, in a beaker. If you heat the beaker, there'll be plumes of warm water rising from the bottom and then cooler water sinking along the sides. That's convection. Um, that's a little harder to picture and that's not often what we're talking about in the Earth's atmosphere. When we're talking about in the Earth's atmosphere, we're usually talking about things like thunderstorms. Thunderstorms is where you're going to learn, gosh, I guess that's probably in the third or fourth module of the course, you're going to learn that thunderstorms are plumes of air rising from the surface. And in general, that's going to be happening because the air is warm and rising, and then cooler air around the thunderstorm will be sinking. Thunderstorms are an example of convection, as warm air is rising and colder air is sinking. It's a way of moving heat in the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, it's so critical to how thunderstorms work that meteorologists actually almost never use the word thunderstorm among themselves. We generally call thunderstorms convection, and you'll see that term quite a bit, I think, especially in the sixth module of the course. Um, you know, the word thunderstorm doesn't really tell you very much. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Meteor Thunder's interesting, but I mean, it doesn't have all that much math uh, meteorological impact. On the other hand, the fact that the thunderstorm is there because it is lifting and lowering air uh, as a way of moving heat is fundamental to how the thunderstorm works. So meteorologists tend to use the word convection specifically to mean thunderstorms. Uh, but it wouldn't have to be. It could be also just anytime you're moving air vertically as a way of moving heat. Another way, remember we talked about, was advection. Now, um, advection can be either cold or it can be warm. Like, okay, I have a map here with some temperatures plotted on it, and um, I don't have the winds on there, so I just sort of drew an arrow here in PowerPoint on there. But see how there's like all this cold air in this on this particular day in... Uh, over like the, the Rockies and so on. Well, if, there, if that air was moving off to the south and east and displacing cold, warmer air and putting colder air in its place, that's cold air advection. It's a way of changing the temperature there by bringing colder air into the place. I mean, for that matter, we could also maybe have warm air advection on that day. If this warmer air that's over the Midwest and the Southeast United States is headed off to the North and West in this particular case, warm air is pushing colder air out of its way, and that is a way of moving heat from a place that's warm to a place that's cold. In fact, it's a very efficient way to do that. Warm air advection and cold air advection are going to be a big part of the story when we learn about things like warm fronts and cold fronts, where they're pushing, where air with one temperature is pushing air with a different temperature out of the way. Again, we won't get to that till I think that's the fifth module of the course, but advection will be a big part of the story of that. Now, before we move on to the third one, which was radiation, when we talk about our three different ways of moving heat around, uh, because that's a rather big topic and, in fact, takes up pretty much the rest of this part of the lecture here, let's do a couple quick questions just to make sure you understood what you've heard so far. Question one. A plume of warm air is rising over a... I'm sorry. A plume of warm air is rising over a warm stove. 
So you can picture this, you've got your hand up over the stove and you can actually feel warm air rising off the stove. This is an example of A, conduction, B, convection, or C, advection. Which of those is the right explanation of how the heat is moving? Make a choice from one of those three options and uh, get some feedback before you move on to question two.